If you had it all your way, how would the world look? Would it be filled with trouble and sorrow or opportunity and joy? Would we laugh and celebrate or cry and lament? Would we sit and watch each other struggle or leap at the chance to lend a hand and love? Would we? Even without differences? If you let your imagination run wild, what could community look like? Could it be the place where ideas are born and thrive? Could it offer strength and support? Could it challenge the status quo and take us to new heights? And at those new heights, perhaps clarity, a better view? So now what? Keep it all in your head, waiting for someone else to make it happen? We're waiting for you. You can change things. You have always been a mover and a shaker at home, at school, in your neighborhood. Now let's reimagine the world together as change makers and see how beautiful it can be. Hello, everyone. I am Antoine Phillips, the Vice President of Brand and Culture Engagement for Gucci North America. And we are so excited to be with you guys today as Gucci Changemakers um, are an amazing program and initiative that we launched a 2.0 yesterday. And we are here today partnering with HBCU Week in the NAACP and bringing you guys an amazing, what I think will be impactful uh, conversation. Um, so before we get started, a few quick things. There is a FAQ box. Guys, feel free to drop in any questions. We also have um, my colleague, Josh Murphy, who will be sharing some reference links to some of the things that we are speaking to. You guys see me looking around or playing around. I'm just looking at my notes because there's a lot of information that we want to share. So uh, definitely want to kick off the video you guys just saw launched yesterday on Vogue.com. Uh, we are super proud of this amazing piece of content, which really contextualizes and tells a story about what we do as Gucci Changemakers. It was directed by Satchel Lee. Um, Spike Lee's daughter, Chance Chamberlain, uh, amazing uh, producer and director. We also had Justin Payne, who is an amazing black queer florist out of Atlanta, who did the beautiful uh, florals that you see there. And then Beth Ann Hardison, uh, model and activist who did the narration. She is also a friend of the brand and a trusted advisor to our global president and CEO. And she's also has just been appointed to our global equity board. So make sure you check that out. That is on our Gucci Equilibrium, Gucci Equilibrium website. Gucci Equilibrium is our CSR platform. That's all things corporate social responsibility under people and planet. So we have all of our amazing social good that lives there. So to kick off the panel, I'm gonna ask our panelists to turn on their cameras. I'm going to start with, we have three amazing individuals, three amazing black women that I get to work with on a day to day. Um, their, their, their colleagues, their friends, their families, they are thought partners, they are brainstorm um, dump partners. This is um, the group that really uh, kind of drives a lot of this messaging around what we do. Uh, again, we sit in the face of fashion and, cre and creativity. Um, so we're, we know that there's probably a lot of other professional uh, course studies out there that are listening in, but this to give you guys a bird's eye view into what we do um, from our different sides. So first I wanna introduce Brandis Daniel founder and CEO of Harlem Fashion Row. Hi, Brandis. Can you hear me okay, Brandis? I can. I can. Okay, cool. Do you well, yep. Brandis, as I, to it. thank you for being here. Brandis, you are joining us from? Brooklyn, New York. Oh, Brooklyn. <laughs> are you no longer in Harlem? I am in Brooklyn right now. Okay, cool. Next, we have uh, Firiel Al Hussein, who is my co-pilot and partner in crime, who builds all things under brand and culture engagement as the brand manager for Gucci uh, North America. And she's joining us from Nairobi. Hello, Firiel. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Anton. It's a pleasure to be here today and to be in such good company on this panel. Looking forward. Thank you, Firiel, for joining us. How's everything in Nairobi? Everything in Nairobi is great. It's nighttime here, so we're already ahead of everybody in the U.S., but <laughs> it's great. Great. And last but not least, we have, um, and also just quick note, Brandis is also a council member and our, our last uh, panel, so I'm going to introduce who is um, first a mentor, um, 
family of friends, some amazing individual. I have to, I want to read this. I wrote this down so I can get her credentials right. But we have Yvette North Shore, who is an award-winning music publicist, owns her own media company, Shore Media Group, a former music editor. She represents some of the favorite artists, including Kelly Rowland, Chloe and Halle, and we all know Beyonce. Mm -hmm. uh, Yvette has been with her, I believe, since the beginning of their, her career in Destiny's Child. She is um, also a lecturer at Beakley College of Music in Valencia, Spain, a fierce defender of human rights and passionate public speaker who believes in purpose and potential of young people. She is also a proud member of the Gucci Chainmakers Council and also an amazing mom and wife and grandmother, Yvette Norshell. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. What an honor, my God. And I'm sitting with these gorgeous ladies and you, of course, you know, the finest thing on here. <laughs> uh, just, yeah, I'm really excited to have the conversation and to, um, to meet virtually, uh, since we were not really seeing them, these amazing young minds. Amazing. Thank you so much, Yvette, Furiel, and Brandis for being with us. So for all of the students out there listening, um, I'm going to moderate this amazing conversation with Brandis, Yvette, and Furiel. And just again, uh, the, the purpose of this is for you guys to learn from us, hear our personal stories and journey. Um, I have some questions that I've put together for the ladies, but this will be kind of a free-flowing conversation. We, again, we, we work together, so they may interject, they may ask each other questions. There might be some that are directed to me, so just want to let you guys um, know that. But with this whole conversation, this is really to give exposure to what we at Gucci do around Gucci changemakers in the application process in terms of our scholarships. We have a $6.5 million fund set up, broken up into two buckets. The impact fund, which is really for uh, communities that hit our 12 focus cities, where we can go in and give grants in an amount of 10K to 50K to those organizations that hit the buckets of arts and culture, social justice and equity, education, and we just announced in yesterday's announcement, health, equity, and wellness around all things, the pandemic and COVID, which is super exciting. Secondly, um, all of you guys out there, the scholarship piece, we give grants up to $20,000 uh, to students who want to pursue and continue their education. Uh, we definitely are looking for those who want to be in the creative space, but not limited to. Um, and HBCUs are preferred. Uh, that's the top of our list. Gucci has made it a point and a mission to make sure that we are putting our dollars into Black creatives, Black young students who want to continue their education within the HBCU space. So any seniors who are in your senior year for class of 2021 in high school, you can apply for this funding. Anyone in their college years up into their junior year, you can also apply for this. So all of this is on our website that will be dropped in the chat at GucciEquilibrium.com. The application process is now open. You can apply for this scholarship from now through the end of January, 2021. And we will be giving out those scholarships next year in 2021. We just gave out uh, in June, I think it was Furiel, if that is correct, the, the, first, the first cohort of scholarships. There's also some amazing mentorship opportunities that we have. My colleague, Julia, from our people team at, at Gucci North America will come on and speak about that next. So um, as I was saying, this is a conversation beyond just being black in fashion, but also about the power of creativity, inclusion, and believing in yourself to achieve your dreams. We have three amazing women who can, who can share their ups and downs, the unique challenges of what they have faced in these new heights and, and you know, in this new world. They come from diverse range of experience from fashion to entertainment to marketing to media to business. A note that I wrote here, success is not easy. You must be willing to for, forego a path and even in the darkest times, and you must be willing to fight, some, fight for something bigger than yourself. And you also have to be willing to fail. We all will succeed, but what are you going to do when you, you know, when you fail? How will you come out of that and, and keep going? So my first um, question is for Brandis. Brandis, uh, growing up, did you see yourself where you are today? Did you ever think that you would be in New York? being in this space of, of, of fashion. Fashion and, and also social good philanthropic work. Yeah, um, I actually did like a little voice diary memo to myself last night. It's so interesting. And I kind of answered that question because I remember being in college, I didn't have the opportunity to go to an HBCU. I wish I did, one of my regrets. Um, but I remember loving fashion. I was probably the only person on my, in my dorm room that actually had a subscription to W Magazine and 
I would pour it through all the pages and I majored in fashion merchandising at the University of Tennessee. So, you know, we didn't have the best fashion program. Mm -hmm. And I just dreamt of moving to New York. I didn't know anyone who lived in New York. I didn't know anyone who had even visited New York until I think my second year of college. And I had spoken to this young lady, I still remember her, and we had a conversation about New York City. And as she was talking to me about the people and the experiences and the situation she found herself in, I'm like, that's it, I'm going. And I'm gonna do something in fashion, I don't know what it's gonna be. I broke up with my then boyfriend, cause I say, you're gonna stop me from moving to New York. So I broke up with him. <laughs> And, um, and it was a dream of mine from probably the age of about 19 um, until I moved here, which was, wasn't until I was 28 years old. And wow. so could I see the things that are happening now? No, I couldn't have. I, I did see myself working in fashion. I saw myself doing something, but the things that have happened in my life in, in these past few years are beyond anything I could have ever really dreamt. Yeah. And I think I think to that to that point, Brandis, we all like with some of the students who are who are studying, you know, in these courses. Now, I, I think we will find as you are on your role, you can't sometimes veer off and, and go in, go in, you know, different directions, different areas. And that's why I think this conversation here is important so people can get exposure to, you know, different spaces. Yvette, what about you growing up? Did you ever think you would be? I hope you don't mind if I just say her name, because I think, I mean, she's, <laughs> she's so, but did you ever think you were going to be Beyonce running point on all of, you know, just her stuff and then the amazing work that you do um, with short media and, and being in these spaces? No, 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 uh, not at all. Uh, I, I came from such a small place, a uh, beautiful place, uh, Grenada, small island in the Southern Caribbean, uh, closest probably to Venezuela and um, we're way way down there and so you don't dream uh, beyond your shores um, but I did dream about being a writer I loved words I knew I loved words I loved reading words any kind of book I found in the house uh, all the way to you know the, the the second reading which was usually left for young people at our Sunday mass and uh but i didn't know where that was going to take me and as far as beyonce or any artist uh that i've ever worked with prince any of those i would have never dreamt about those artists because they would not have been artists that i would have heard of in the caribbean at all and i'm not saying obviously beyonce was a kid at that point probably you know a baby <laughs> when i came to the country <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm saying these kinds of artists uh, beyond uh, reggae and calypso and so I would not have heard them. Um, and, and, and so my dream to even think about music uh, was not there. So uh, what I did think about, like I say, is the written word and communication. I was always uh, a talker. I was always the kid around the table that they said, shh, 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 you know, to. Um, but I, I think that the most beautiful thing about living is learning to dream beyond your borders. Learning, you know, we've taught to dream big, but uh, it's, it, it's even better to dream wide, uh, the unimaginable, and to understand very, very early that ownership costs, you know, like when you want to own your yeah. own business or those kinds of things, it costs in blood, sweat, and tears, in sacrifices, and staying up late, and, and doing all those things. So to be in the position First of all, the position of being publicist to whomever, fill in the blank, has allowed me to do all the other things I do, like teach, like join the Gucci Changemakers Council, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and for the students listening who are just purely thinking about fashion in terms of probably design or merchandising or becoming a model or becoming a fashion uh, a fashion editor at a magazine i'm here to say to them that what i do as a communicator crosses every industry so if you are thinking that you want to be a communicator or a marketer and you don't see that place in fashion and you you're the person who you know, like I used to cut my dad's jacket and pin it and do all kinds <laughs> of stuff, you know, but you could, you can work in fashion 
and not ever pick up a scissors and some fabric. You can work Absolutely. in passion and be the communicator that puts yes. out the key message to the rest yes. of the world. Yes. Yeah. And, and Yvette and Brandis, I think you guys know too, that's a big part of change makers is amplifying the roles outside of the design space, right? Amplifying the roles and seats that we get to sit in. Furiel and I now are in like, a, I guess, the social good, social impact, philanthropic, brand engagement, brand and culture engagement space uh, within the company. But yeah, exposing those different job roles. Furiel, you, what was it like? I mean, you have a very interesting story, I feel, and uh, you're joining us from Nairobi. What was it like growing up for you? And did you ever think that you would be in the space that you're in? And did you always want to work in fashion? Um, what, what was your future vision as a little girl? Yeah, I mean, I think similarly to Yvette and Brandis, I come from a place that's not considered to be a fashion capital. Um, Kenya is on the east coast of Africa. Um, you know, we're very far removed from New York, Milan, Paris. But I think growing up, it was always really evident to me that there was opportunity. Like, we have such an interesting market. We have so much culture. We have so much we bring to the table, so much that you know, is just embodied in, um, in, in the continent. Um, mm -hmm. And I felt there was always an opportunity for that to be amplified and connected to these social movements that we see and hear about and watch on social media. Um, I think, you know, in regards to like career path, I was always yeah. definitely passionate about fashion, but um, even more so the impact that fashion can have. Um, whether it's in terms of creating industry, being an economic booster, creating jobs, education opportunities. Fashion is such a vehicle for so many different things that we don't realize. It's so much more than just clothing. Um, it's also self-expression, which is so important. Um, so, you know, it's interesting because I, I think we've had this conversation many times, Antoine, but um, in many ways, like this position now is kind of like my dream job. I definitely didn't yes. imagine it. it Su Susan, our, our president and CEO, mm -hmm. you know, she says all the time, she said, you guys have my dream, dream job, <laughs> being able to do the work. And now we've coined dream work as a new yeah. ha hashtag coming <laughs> off of yesterday. But what, yeah. but I want to ask all three of you guys, too, starting with Brandis, um, the Gucci Changemakers initiative came together really like a year ago. And then we uh, assembled a council, which... Um, um, I get to I get to chair and Furiel plays a role and Yvette and Brandis, you guys are, are are key council members in leading and driving and having visibility into everything that we're doing. Um, what has it been like for you, Brandis, being a part of this group? What does it mean? Um, give a little bit of a glimpse of an insight of, of, of what we're working on. Um, and then Yvette, I want you to kind of just touch on, because I know you go a bit way farther back with the brand and having kind of real, you know, brands of the house, um, how it's been, how it's been for you. Yeah. Brandis? Yeah, first I want to say when Gucci Changemakers was first kind of forming and when Marco Bizarro was speaking about like what he was going to do, I remember almost projecting and thinking, okay, here's what Gucci's going to do. And then when I actually saw the outline of what Changemakers was going to do, I was blown away because it was far beyond, <laughs> <laughs> far, far beyond <laughs> what I thought the change makers and Gucci would commit to. And so for me, it's amazing because I feel like I'm in the middle of history that's being made by a luxury brand. I think we'll look back at this moment mm -hmm. and at this group at Gucci that you guys have brought together and see that like that was a moment in history that inspired the fashion industry to see what it could do and the impact that it could have. You know, when and now so many companies are looking to do things, especially in terms of racial equity. And I yeah. really feel like the Gucci Changemakers program has laid the foundation at the highest level of what can be accomplished when we all come together. So it's yeah. been an incredible experience for me. And I mean, I'm so honored to be a part of it, um, to see the students that are being impacted and that are actually getting much needed funds is, is just really incredible. Brandis, if you can quickly, before I kick it over to you, Vic, speak to, I think, some of the HBCU students listening. A lot of students may not know that HBCUs do offer fashion programs. Um, yeah. For those maybe who may come out of this conversation, just quickly touch on some of those universities. I know Southern, we know Howard, but I wanna, wanted you to give some visibility into that because you've been key in helping us drive that, that part. Yeah, a few years ago with Harlem's Fashion Row, we did an HBCU tour um, because when you're looking at HBCUs who are traditionally underfunded, 
if you look at the fact that they have fashion departments, what department do you think is going to get the leftovers, right? When you think about engineering, science, math, fashion falls all the way at the bottom of the ranks. And I remember sitting in the change maker program and HBCU started to, to come up. And mm -hmm. um, I share it with you, Antoine, like the work that yeah. we had done in some HBCUs and going to Howard's campus and seeing that there wasn't enough sewing machines and there wasn't, yeah. a, you know, and what the, but these students were taking like the resources that were available and making amazing things happen yeah. from yeah. so little. And so I'm just, you know, the fact that you have really taken this on, that Gucci has taken this on and said, we're committing to HBCUs is major, but Howard has a fashion program. Um, Clark Atlanta has a fashion program, um, Hampton, has a fashion program. Um, Southern North University Tennessee has a fashion program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's there's more HBCUs than you really know that 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 has fashion programs and, and need the support. So again, kudos to you guys for, for cool. being in this. Thank you, Brandis. And uh, we're gonna drop in the link Harlem Fashion Row, which you'll learn more about later in this conversation in the Icon 360. Yvette, what has it been like for you being a part of the, the council, being a part of the mission in this work and the relationship that you really have with the brand? Uh, it's been one of the highlights of uh, my career, of my, of my life, um, honestly, uh, to see change uh, happening right before our eyes and to be a part of it with people I've long loved and admired and that includes uh, the Gucci team, but it also includes people like Brandis, who, you know, I watched from afar and just wanted to be her friend, you know, and, and to be in rooms with her, to be in rooms with her and these days to be on a thousand, you know, these virtual things with her and, and see, you know, let me just, let me say a few things. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I'm a very emotional person. I'm going to try not to cry here, but, um, uh, Again, I'm going to bring up the small island I'm from, right? And there's this, there's this designer who bears my last name. And we're trying to claim each other because our island is so small. So we think we belong to each other. So uh, Felicia Noel, known as Fee Noel, um, you know, she really has been doing her thing for a long time. But it's Brandis. It's because of Brandis's work that it elevated that designer. Like people got to know who she is and what she's capable of doing. So me, as this proud immigrant, I was like, it's, it's Brandis. This is the woman that I've been admiring. And now she sort of makes it full circle and helps this young woman that I've always long admired, right? So yeah. to be in the same room with people, you know, people say like minds, but in that room, there are people with like hearts. Mm. And how you extend yourself, extend your heart to not be selfish mm -hmm. and to help contemporaries as well as the next generation. It's legacy building every single time we're, we're in the room. And as far as the family sort of coming together for me, I wanna mm -hmm. say that we talk about companies and we talk about corporations and we describe it as though they're just buildings, you know, buildings with computers, but companies for me have always meant people. Yeah. They've always meant people and people can build and break a company. And because every moment you walk into your office, you have the chance to make new rules to build on your company to build your pipeline, to extend to someone else. And I have to say that the people who I now know as Gucci executives, I've known them before Gucci. Yeah. And, I, and I, knew that they, I knew their hearts were perfectly set for what it is they're doing now. But now bring it up to Gucci. My work with Gucci didn't start with uh, the Change Makers Council. It started with not even Gucci as a fashion brand. I knew Gucci was a fashion brand. Come on, I, you know, I dream of Gucci. Couldn't afford Gucci. But, you know, the dream, the aspiration was there. But here's the thing. I worked with Gucci on a little thing called Chime for Change. Yes. And it was yes. about women. It was about women elevating the voices, the needs, the issues, the crisis 
of women and girls around the world. And I sat in a room with your president, Susan, this beautiful woman who came into our office with Lila. And in two seconds, we were on. We were like, you're going to save the world because I truly believe that you empower women, they empower their girls, and they empower their sons. So to come on board in this council and look across the room and see these same two women and Robert, who I've loved and admired for such a long time, and then to have my industry son, <laughs> and Juan lead the charge, lead the charge and sit next to sisters like June Ambrose, you know? I, it, it, is, it is talking the talk, walking the walk, doing the do. It's about doing it. It's about doing yes. the work. And, and you know, Antoine, that the work was done way before you told the world the work was done. And that's a good thing. Do it first. Do it first, then let people know. And now that these students could benefit from us being in a room, from us saying there is a pipeline to be built, there is retention to create so that when you climb up that pipeline, you get stuck the good way. You get to stay in a place and make a difference. And then I like to say, when you get into that pipeline, when you climb up that Gucci change makeup pipeline, Give back. be it as a council member yeah. or be it as a recipient of a scholarship, you are given the Gucci ladder. What you do with that ladder, the next thing you do with that ladder is so important. What you do with the ladder, you throw it back down so mm. someone else climbs up. That is what Gucci is doing. That is what the Change Makers program is doing. That is what being married today to the HBCUs is doing. It's like, here is the ladder. Don't just hold the bottom of it, pull yourself up and then bring the other person up with you. It is important for people to know that when you wear a Gucci piece, it fits right. It's important for them to know the belt is, is gorgeous. It's important for them to know you feel good in the shoes. <laughs> but when you wear a Gucci piece, you need to peel back the layers and think about the people behind the brand that's making a difference. It is beyond clothes. It is beyond yes. fashion. It's about culture. Mm -hmm. It's about elevating all of us to come together, be as one and help the next generation. Wow. Yeah. I see Brandis, I see Real shaking their head. I mean, and I think too, Eva, people need to remember we're an Italian company. We're not an American brand. That's right. That's doing and giving the resources of what we're, you know, what we're doing. Puriel, uh, Yvette said it's hard work. You're on the inside. You built this <laughs> with, along with Josh Murphy from Ideas Forward, who um, I'm is stepping away because my computer is, is, is dying and I'm just gonna plug no, it in. Okay, okay, all good, all good. Josh you know, Murphy, who is an amazing, our co-pilot, uh, one big thing for me, you, Susan, Christine, the team was to have the right people in a room to help build the work. I like to consider myself a fashion practitioner, not a DEI expert or practitioner. Um, for you, give a bit insight of what it's like working on the program, working with the council, building what we have. I mean, yeah, I think, you know, for starters, I mean, it's definitely hard work, but I would say beyond that, um, it's extremely personal work. It's something that you live and breathe in and outside of an office. Um, it's about culture, like Yvette said, it's about identity, it's about representation. So, um, you know, there, there's no church and state, so to speak, right? It's all becomes one. And um, working on these programs has been really fulfilling in many ways because it is the progress that we always wanted to see. Um, you know, the end vision comes to life. And in those moments, I think there's a realization that there is an alternate system that's possible and there is an alternate 
way for this industry to operate. So, I mean, a lot of hard work, but I think it's, it's all very worthwhile for many reasons. A uh, question for all three of you guys, you ferry all first. Why is it important to have black women at the table in the boardroom? Because we're the blueprint. Because <laughs> we're the blueprint. <laughs> Blueprint. We're precious. We we have vision. <laughs> uh, because you're gonna get the honest truth. And <laughs> that <part. laughs> that's that's my answer. You're gonna get the honest truth. You know, we most of us have come from a such a place of struggle that we don't have it in us to give you anything but the pure facts and what we actually feel about a situation. Yeah. Yvette, why is it important to have black women at the table? And we season the pot. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, bring, we bring the pepper. Uh, <laughs> you know, but honestly, I mean, like Brenda said, I mean, black women bring truth. We don't know anything else. Black women bring love. Black women are passionate. Black women know suffering. And we work, we work, we work every day to eliminate that for the next generation. It's okay. We want you to fall a little bit because you can't be successful without falling. But I think black women want to build, want to keep building. And we, we have to be in a room for it to be real, for it to be honest. Um, any room you walk into and you don't see a black female executive it's not a room i want to be in simple as that cool uh two more questions for you guys then we're going to go into q a because i know that we all want to engage with the students the yeah. first one i think this is important considering what's going to kind of you know happen around november 3rd and want to quickly put out there i hope everyone listening is registered to vote yes. hope you're going to yes. vote loud on november 3rd uh gucci the team here gucci change makers we announced a very exciting initiative called uh uh, with when we all vote um, from a nonpartisan perspective, making sure that generation next, uh, you know, uh, the millennials between the ages of 18 and 24 get out and register to vote. We launched the when we all vote, we become Gucci change makers vote loud November 3rd under the vote loud initiative. Uh, Furiel Wednesday, I believe we have a Gucci portal that will be shared. We are encouraging all of you guys to go there, sign up to register to vote. Um, some excitement. ASAP Rocky has been supporting this initiative. We have three amazing students from our Gucci program for scholars who created the artwork for the creative, which was just shared uh, last night on uh, When We All Vote. Josh, I would love for you to share that uh, direct link to When We All Vote with that infograph so they can see it. But please register to vote and, uh, and vote loud on November 3rd. And I know Brandis Furiel, myself, Marco Bazzari, Susan Chokachi, uh, Lucinda, our, our head of HR, this is something that we were passionate about, but making sure we're being responsible and for us, it's a nonpartisan perspective, yeah. but using this amazing brand and the platform that we have to amplify, get reach out to just make sure everyone's registered to vote. Uh, the question that I have, Furiel, I'm gonna go to you first. We're living in incredible stressful dark times, especially as black and brown people. How do we take care of our mental and personal well-being? What do you all do to stay productive and to kind of just keep, keep it all together, Furiel? Um, I think for me, I've been very conscious of, of the energy around me, um, as much as being a recipient of good energy, but also giving it back, loving on the people around me, my family, my colleagues, my friends. Um, you know, I, I find a lot of peace in, in community. And so I've just been tapping into that as much as possible at all times. Cool. Yvette? Uh, I dance. <laughs> Uh, uh, I dance a lot in this closet here. I, uh, as a Caribbean girl, there's just uh, music uh, that runs through my bones the moment I wake up and I refuse to have the racial pandemic and the health pandemic crush my joy. I've been blessed to be quarantined with uh, my husband and my children, my grown children. So uh, there's a lot of love here. Um, and uh, what keeps me really going and what keeps me focused is actually to focus on other people's joy. 
and to make sure that they're not forgetting that. So I know, Antoine, you've been the recipient of my texts and my calls and my FaceTime. I just think it's very important to reach out to our friends because uh, it, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. I think if a doctor checks your heartbeat when you're sort of alone, it'll be one thing. And the second you start talking to friends, I think your heartbeat is just like, it's a dance, it's a rhythm. It's so I think uh, even in these times of not being able to touch each other, for our own uh, mental wellness and for those of our friends, we have to, we have to stay connected. We are, we are beings like that. We yes. need each other. We, we need each other and we have to keep connecting. Yeah, yeah. I, I have what I have, like my, my board of um, trustees and executives, that group kind of that I know like the FaceTimes that we can, that we can go to. Brandis, um, how do you keep yourself productive and keeping your mental all together? And I think we had a kind of a call last week where it was like a little check-in, um, just checking in on one another. But what are you doing? Um, I have to tell you, yesterday was a rough day. I yeah. decided to sit in it yesterday. So sometimes I think we're so quick to try to like move on. Um, and I just knew yesterday I, I needed to sit in it. So I called help. I called on my team to take meetings for me um, that I was supposed to be on yesterday, just so that I just felt the need to just sit. Mm. And then this morning I woke up at five and went walking with a really great girlfriend and we got a chance to talk and be. And in the morning we always start off with what are you grateful for? And the moment I start talking about what I'm grateful for, like I can feel my entire spirit like lift. Mm. And so for me, it's been sometimes sitting in it for that moment, not for a long time, but for the moment that I need to sit in it and just feel what I feel. Mm. And then- yeah doing something physical with a friend so that I can just like talk and get it all out. Yeah. For me, it's classical music. And I think just staying grounded every night, I make sure I put my slippers far under my bed. So in the morning when I get up, I have to get on those knees, reach as far as I can. And I just say, thank you. And I think you guys know what I'm saying, but, um, Furiel, there was a question that came through that I feel Josh is kind of sharing some and then, I want to hear what everyone's kind of working on because I know Brandon, you have the exciting Icon 360. Mm -hmm. We bet you always have exciting projects, a lot you usually can't <laughs> talk about. But <laughs> um, and then we're gonna go to uh, Q and A. But Firo, there, uh, I believe it's um, Jaden says, can you describe the path to international business? And I, you were in Italy, and then you came to New York. Um, you have a amazing mm -hmm. credentials outside of being an amazing person but just from a higher education you wrote a beautiful thesis i feel like you can maybe touch on can you describe the path to international business yeah i mean um of course fashion is deeply embedded in all things international business because we serve a global marketplace um you know for me my path um had a lot to do with with just staying open and being curious and taking the L's and learning from them. <laughs> um, I think it's always important to, um, you know, look for opportunities even in spaces where they don't seem present, right? Like, I think everybody is born with a purpose and if you know what your vision is, um, you know, you, you keep searching for it in everything you do. So, um, International business is definitely something attainable. It just depends on what your approach is. I think there are a lot of learning opportunities, whether it's through um, mentorship from somebody you know who's maybe in that space or internships with companies who have um, a global reach. Um, you know, I, I think that there's many ways to approach it, but it's definitely a field that touches on almost every industry. So. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, Brandis, let's talk about what are um, some of all the exciting things you're working on, your creative projects, um, a good two minute kind of deep dive into the same for you, Yvette, like just what are some of the projects you're working on outside of Changemakers Absolutely. in your day to day? So, yeah. So this week, um, we have 10 designers who are participating in Market Week. And so they have met with every major retailer you can think of to consider buying their brand. So their appointment is going on right now as I speak. Um, we are with, with Nordstrom's, Nordstrom, all, the, all the big departments. Yeah. Avenue, net yeah. yes. Yeah. And then um, today, actually, there's a shoot going on right now in LA 
for the launch of our um, Janie and Jack partnership. That's a kids queer brand mm -hmm. and three black female designers partnered with HFR to create um, this amazing kids collection. I have a, like one pair of the shoes right here. Oh, so, <laughs> so we're excited about that. That's launching on October 10th and we have a really exciting announcement about our host for that event that's coming up. That's um, something that's something brand is that people can tune into virtually this yeah, event yeah. on October 10th. Everybody can tune okay, in. cool. So yeah, so they if they go to our cool. website now, they can um, register for that. And then um, next Tuesday, we're going to be announcing the 27 winners of the, um, we got a million dollar grant earlier this year from the CFDA in Vogue mm. for, from their A Common Thread Fund. And so we're going to be announcing 27 recipients of that award on Tuesday on Vogue.com. So Amazing. stay tuned for that. And <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot going on. A lot. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're we're excited. This is a great time for people of color in fashion and black designers in particular, which is my purpose and my heart. So yeah. um, excited. Thank you. Cool. And before I kick it to um, Yvette for the same question, fun projects, exciting things going on in, in, in her day to day. Brand just mentioned CFDA. That is Council Fashion Designers of America, mm -hmm. which is a non for profit within our fashion space. Um, uh, which just hired their first black president, Madam President Cassandra Diggs, who is amazing. Uh, we, we work with them on also change makers. So we have a scholarship that we uh, have defined. The first one was for two students who are currently in high school that were gonna be designers. And we're paying four years on their um, tuition at an accredited design school. Accredited design schools are Parsons, FIT, uh, uh, SCAD in Savannah. Josh can drop some of those in, uh, resource link. Um, and those students, it was a uh, Kaya young lady from DC and Ajay from San Francisco, our two focus cities and they've been amazing. Uh, Kaya is actually one of the individual's artwork that was featured on When We All Vote yesterday. Um, but this time around through the CFDA, we will be honoring and awarding a black female. However, this black female identifies as a black woman in her junior year um, at um, an accredited design school. So she has to be a junior at an accredited design fashion school and we will get, we're gonna support it by doing the last dollars on that scholarship, doing 20K. All of the, the black women and women who are on our Gucci Changemakers Council will be selecting this winner. So myself and Josh will not be a part of this um, select, reviewing, we'll have visibility, but that's super exciting and that's all on our website at GucciEquilibrium.com. Um, Furiel, I'm sorry, Yvette, over to you quickly. Um, exciting things you're working on. Then we're gonna jump into, Q, uh, we're gonna go over to my colleague, Julia, who's gonna do an exciting, announcement and then we're going to do Q&A. Well, you know that, uh, you know my reputation is that I never speak <laughs> about what I'm doing. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I will, I could, I could tell you some of the things I, uh, we just did that I'm very excited about and Black is King, Black is The King, biggest Black one is King. Black is King. <laughs> 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 what, a, what, a, what a pleasure it is. It, yes. it continues to be, to be associated with that and to have done the press with the, with the incredible staff at Disney uh, PR on that, uh, and, and certainly not just for Beyonce, but for the hundreds of uh, people involved, everything from our wardrobe designer to co-directors and so forth. So that has been amazing to see uh, black and brown creatives from the African diaspora just really get, get to shine. Uh, that has been amazing. I just want to say something really quickly at the end of, the, of, of Black is King. There's like, I mean, minutes and minutes and minutes of scroll, right, with people's names. And I watched it with my uh, seven-year-old granddaughter, and I, 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 I was just like showing her that the, the number of people it takes to make something like that come together. And I wasn't saying anything about myself. And then she's like, Grandma, why is your name up there? <laughs> <laughs> That was amazing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, lots, lots coming up. Chloe and Hallie has made an, you just, yes. just, it, it, just it. made cr creativity in, 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 in yeah. quarantine, you know? Yeah. So, um, we're looking forward and to, and to Yvette, I know, um, I thought I was going to be able to try to get something out of you because Yvette is someone I'll text at like, cause I'm on a different time zone being in California. I'll text her maybe midnight in my time, which means it's like 3am. It's just like, I'm up working. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, so something top secret is getting ready to pop off. Or yeah. Just, it's not, I'm there sure are lots, of, so there are lots and lots <laughs> of things uh, coming. There are lots and lots cool. of things coming. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just going to keep smiling. <laughs> cool. 
Furiel, what are you, what are some exciting things that you can share? But I also like Yvette, we can't share everything in our amazing Gucci space. Um, outside of the brand turning 100 years old next year, wow. which is super exciting, 100 years old, so we'll be celebrating our birthday. What are some exciting things you're working on around Changemakers? What's next now that the fun is open um, and these kids can apply quickly? What are some exciting things coming out of the program? Well, I think that's the exciting thing is that we get to meet a whole new pool of candidates, right? Yes. Like all of these applicants, you scholars, um, impact fund recipients. I'm sure some of the students on this line also have initiatives that they're a part of or that they started on their own. We'd love to mm -hmm. hear from you. Um, I think that's the most exciting part is that we get to meet so many different people who are actually doing the work on the ground and be able to support them. Yeah. So yeah, very excited for that and to continue to see partnerships like this with the NAACP, with HBCU yes. Week. Um, we have yes. so many ideas and things that we've been talking about and I'm sure the next few months will be a great display of that. And a quick shout out to the NAACP team and President yes. Derek Johnson, who we built a really good relationship with, uh, Furiel and myself and Susan and Christine and the team have been working with them over a year. Like Yvette, you were saying the work was already kind of done before we announced it. I mean, we've been in so many behind closed doors and just navigating um, with real intention and purpose um, with, with real uh, individuals who play in the social good, social impact space. So this was born out of um, our relationship with the NAACP and Ashley and, and Brandon and amazing HBCU Week Foundation, which we consider now as a part of the Gucci Changemakers program. And we're gonna be working closely with them and offering more exciting opportunities. This was, I know, a big thing, at least for the brand and really our president and CEO, Susan Chokichi, because we, we know we need to get the word out. Um, we are this huge brand and, and sometimes amazing product and things that we do can overshadow and overlook, but change makers are starting to wake, make its way up there um, and sit right there in that same space. But make sure you guys check out Gucci Equilibrium where you can learn more about all of this. Uh, gonna kick it over to Julia, who will um, make an exciting announcement um, regarding a, um, a opportunity that we have at Gucci. Julia Meyer is our, um, she's a part of our, our people team, which is the new term from human resources. She's me and Furiel's co-pilot. She works with us on all things brand engagement. Um, she's a, a sister on the side. She goes to all of our amazing HBCU week engagement. Um, she's, she's amazing. Julia, thank you for all that you do. She runs the GPS program. Uh, she's running point on all of our employee engagement with myself as she and I are the captains of our internal voting squad around when we all vote, vote loud. Julia, share um, the announcement that we have for this, this group. Well, thank you for And thank you for being with us from, from Texas. Texas. I'm <laughs> no, super my excited pleasure. to be here with you guys. Um, and I've loved hearing from two of our Changemakers council members as well as my team. I love being a part of these engagements. <laughs> And it's really rejuvenating to be speaking to students and speaking to the future of what the industry is going to be. So I'm very excited. Um, so I'm equally excited to share with you a little bit about the Gucci program for scholars. This is a virtual learning opportunity that we developed this year that is really focused around bringing education to students around the fashion industry and of course around Gucci North America and giving kind of a behind the scenes look at what we do every day and what our teams are working on and you know, what a company like ours is made up of. So we are excited to be launching again and for a fall session, um, starting next week actually. And we have opened up one spot for an individual from this conversation around HBCU week to um, join us on that in our group of 25 in our new cohort. Um, we have individuals of all disciplines and it is a, a program for university level students, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, university level students only of all areas of discipline. So you don't have to necessarily be in fashion. It is obviously preferred if you have an interest in the industry, but we've had individuals that are interested in nutrition, legal, um, all sorts of backgrounds, but business administration, creative studies, graphic design. So it's really a very open call to students that just want to learn more and really engage with us as a brand. And so the program is made up of a few different pro of a few different aspects. So we have department engagement, where you hear from every single one of our teams within Gucci North America, from our finance team to our facilities team, merchandising, wholesale. You really get to see the people that are supporting the business and driving the initiatives every day. Every student is also paired up with a mentor of an, within the area of their interest. 
They meet with them once a week and they get to kind of discuss um, what the industry looks like and get best tips of how to get their foot in the door. And it's, it's really another connection to the brand that is so special and it really helps you build that networking from such an early start. Um, and then we have a lot of other amazing engagements that we offer with the program. We bring in guest speakers, similar to Brandis and Yvette, um, and you know, engaging in the conversation of what it is to be partners with Gucci. And we have internal guest speakers as well from our retail stores and within our entire executive team, they all engage with us. And then we have skill building workshops, so transferable skills you can really use in any area of your life, personally, professionally, educationally, so things like communication skills, uh, presentation skills, resume building, we've really built it out. So these are things that you can walk away with and really add benefit to wherever you go in the future. So as I shared, we have one spot available in our fall program. I'm super excited about it. And so if you guys are interested and you are enrolled in university studies, you can be freshman all the way to senior, it doesn't matter the year, but you do have to be in university studies. Um, you can send an email to info at hbcuweek.org and let them know that you're interested. And um, you can upload your resume, share a portfolio, share any content you want with us um, to be considered. And then we will um, share with you, engage with you and share a little bit more about the program and see, you know, the availability for this, for the fall program. And then we can go from there. So I look and forward Julia to getting some interest. Thank you, Julia. And Brandis and Yvette, I'm nominating them to help select. We'll, yes. we'll be working past this week and we'll share with you guys as council members, we'll share you guys some of those CVs. Um, we will be finding and picking the person on Monday because the new program starts on Tuesday. Okay. So um, please <laughs> email, uh, go at HBCU. <laughs> no, we can, um, but it's all good. We'll make it very easy. You know, we're we're good, we're, we're really good with a toolkit. So you'll get a toolkit, yeah. it'll be easy. Um, but the program starts on Tuesday, as Julia said, we have members already involved. We run a super tight professional ship. So come with your professionalism, come ready to learn, come ready to be a part of this Gucci community, amazing experience. Um, so with that being said, that is it for us. We are now going to click it over, click it over to for a quick Q and A. Um, my colleague, Josh Murphy, will be snapshotting quickly and sending me some of these questions. I have a few already here. Josh, if you want to throw me a few more, that'd be great. Um, we have, um, <clears throat> this one can be for Furiel. Are the opportunities for change makers to work with Gucci for internships, even if they do not study fashion, like working as film? I think Julia kind of touched on that, but um, do you want to just kind of drive home again? You don't have to work in fashion to be a part or apply for a change makers program. There are so many different um, aspects of the fashion industry, whether it's film or accounting or legal or design or merchandising. Um, you know, if you're interested in film and have an interest in the fashion industry overall, I think that it would be a great idea for you to apply for this internship. And we would love to have people with diverse experiences and diverse skills be a part of this program. Okay, thank you, Furiel. Um, Yvette, who's your favorite designer? Question I can't do. <laughs> a trick question. Uh, who is my favorite designer? That is such a good question. Uh, it's whoever designs Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some good ones. I, you know, I mean, obviously, Fino Well is a is is very very in, in, important to me and uh, Michelle, and um, I like Stella McCartney. Uh, but you know, I'm a high low girl. I'm a high-low girl, you know, I, I would wear Gucci uh, slides with some Gap jeans and a t-shirt that I found at Marshalls, and I'm happy with that, you know, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm about clothes, so more, much more than I'm about who designed it, I just wanted to fit. Nice. <laughs> Brandis, who are some of the Black women in fashion that you look up to or inspired you? Oh, there are so many. Um, first one that comes to mind is Audrey Smaltz because she was the first person on my advisory board and has just been there for me every step of the way <laughs> since the beginning. So um, her, Bethann Hardison, who was the narrator of that beautiful video piece that we saw at yes. the very beginning. Um, Robin Givon, I've been reading her articles for so long. Terry. Who just got promoted. Robin Gavon. 
Yeah. yeah. Robin Gavon, guys, is the chief critic writer for Washington Post and only person in fashion to be awarded a Pulitzer Prize, and she's a Black woman. Wow. Just, yeah, Robin Gavon, research, look up. Yeah, uh, Terry Agins, who's written two of the yep. most profound books that ever have been written about fashion. Um, I look up to women like Yvette Noel Shore, <laughs> who, I mean, I mean, who has, <laughs> you know, impacted fashion in so many ways and who has been doing the work. And it was, you know, I've been knowing about Yvette for years. I was afraid to text her though and email her. I, uh, yes. <laughs> so yes. it's an honor for me to be on this Zoom with her, you know, so, um, so many, so many incredible women. Cool. Julia, for you, are there, are, are there programs for high school seniors available? Great question. But unfortunately, right now, we just have it for um, our university level students. But be on the lookout as you graduate in the coming year. We do programs in the summer for incoming university freshmen. Um, so stay tuned and, and just keep in touch with the brand. Ariel, do you work with any Pacific HBCUs to offer internships? If so, which ones? Um, you know what? We don't have partnerships with any exclusive HBCUs. We want this opportunity to be open to all HBCUs. Um, I know that we have a few people on here from Howard that I saw in the chat. So, I mean, we would love <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> we would love to amplify within your space too. I mean, we try and be a part of different opportunities like this amazing HBCU week opportunity just to get the information out there. But um, please share, please let us know how we can do more. Um, that's really our goal. And this entire Changemakers project is very evergreen. We are constantly looking at ways of making it better, more impactful. Um, so we would love to, to connect with anybody from HBCUs on the call later please let us know. You know, <laughs> uh, um, I just, I just want to add something quickly because Brenda said it at the very beginning. Uh, yeah. I, I've lived my life very loud, very out there. I, at least when I became an adult, uh, there was a moment in my life where I was just very in the back of the room. But uh, once I became an adult, I became very, I want to be in the front of the room. Uh, and so I don't have a lot of regrets. You know, all of my mistakes I've learned from, all of my falls, I keep the bruises and I learn from it. Mm. The one regret I have, and let me say, let me say this. I love my college experience. I have been going to New York, Harlem, City College, part of the City, City University of New York, becoming a journalist on that campus. Like I got married while I was in college. My life started in college, so I don't have any regrets about that. But when we presented Homecoming, we did it in partnership with a few HBCU schools. And I went to Howard. I was picked to go to Howard to present the film. And my, my uh, niece at the time was in a middle school at Howard's campus. My sister had gotten her, uh, her degree, her master's from, from, from Howard. So I was really ready to go to Howard. And when I got to Howard University with my Howard University sweatshirt, and I got into that auditorium, the energy that was on that campus, I, I, I cursed City College, like immediately. I was like, what did I miss out on? Oh my God, how did I miss out on coming to this school right here in DC? Oh my goodness. So, you know, and just from the work we do, we yep. here, but also the work I do with Beyonce with the HBCU scholarships that she has done. What an incredible, what an incredible society to be a part of, you know, to, 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 to look up and see that Blacks were not given the chance to go to the high education place of their choice. And President Lyndon Johnson saying, uh-uh, we can't, we can't do that. And all of the policies around that that said, let's, let's create a place where you could be educated and you could be culturally sound. Let me tell you, I want to live 30 more years at least so I could have two more babies so I can send them to an HBCU. Because my kids, are college. <laughs> my kids are done with college. You know, maybe my grandchild will go. But 
for those of you already at an HBCU, what an incredible, incredible experience, experience. education, yeah. history, and culture. Yeah. Walk, walk forever proud in that experience, forever proud. And yeah, I'm partial to Howard, but you know, I have friends from Hampton. Same, too. same H here, HU. <laughs> yes. Uh, to all the high school students who are listening in, continue to do what you're doing, walk to the beat of your own drum, study hard, research. Um, people say, if I can do it, you can do it, so true. Yeah. Um, but to the young kids who are in high school right now, um, who are in this space of learning virtually, um, if, you, if you, I'm speaking to those who wanna potentially, you know, be in, be in fashion, um, there's a lot of amazing documentaries you can reference on Netflix. Um, an amazing one that, that I love is the producer, of course, it's Gucci. With, with Frida Janini and, and who was our previous designer, Alessandra Michaela. But just to see that world, of course, Devil Wears Prada, The Last Emperor, uh, you know, and on Valentino. Um, Brand, the September issue. The September yeah. issue. Yes, the September issue. Yeah. Brandis, you, I, do you have any, any um, good ones that you want to throw out quickly for just as a resource for some kids who may want to continue to dive and dig in a fashion space? What can they watch? You know, I love the remix. Mm. Yes. Hip hop. Yes. Laughing and yes. 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 <laughs> yes. 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 That's really and true. and we would be remiss not to uh, mention one of our amazing co-chairs, Dapper Dan, who yes. is in the remix and is a big part of all the things that we do and is so passionate about these types of engagements. So um, that is it for us. I want to do ask the panelists one last thing. If you can leave the students with just one word, just one word, what would that one word be? Mine is dream. Yvette? Passion. Passion. Curiel? Impact. Brandis? Go. Julia? Fire. Cool. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Apply for the GPS program. Uh, Brandis and um, Yvette and Furiel, thank you guys so much for being a part of this. It's amazing. Uh, Ashley, Brandon, Tiffany, Josh, the back end team, President Derek Johnson, Iris, Yumika, thank you guys all so much for letting Gucci be a part of this um, amazing um, engagement today. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Wear a mask and don't forget wear to vote on November. Vote, vote. Don't forget to vote, vote, vote. vote Sign vote up and for register. register so you can vote. Register, <laughs> yes. Register at the Gucci When We All Vote Loud portal um, right. and become a part of our voting squad. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you, everyone, and thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye.